You're very welcome to this talk and today we're going to look at more real world data that shows the efficacy of these vaccines. Now it's interesting, I remember back in February, I think it was, uh, 2020, um, a year ago, uh, Patrick Valance, the Chief Scientific Officer in the UK, was asked about vaccines and he said, well, we'll probably end up with something. And, you know, if he'd known the range of vaccines that we have now and the efficacy of these vaccines and how good they are at keeping people out of hospital, I think he would have been astounded. And I think it's fair to say that Patrick was representing scientific opinion at the time. So the, the, the immense development in vaccinations over this past year has just been stunning and has stunned uh, individual scientists, but I think stunned science as well to some degree. So let's get straight down to the data. Now, this one is uh, from the uh, SIREN study. Now, this is published on the UK government website, so you can read all about it there. Uh, uh, it's also studied in, uh, it's also published in paper form. It's a preprint from The Lancet. But as I say, it's based on, on this official government data. So um, any changes that were made in peer review, I would expect to be fairly, fairly presentational and um Obviously, for, for what it's worth, I've read it and I'm more, I'm more than happy with it. So let's get straight down to the, uh, to the detail on, on this. Um, Pfizer, now th this is the Pfizer vaccine. Now people keep saying, um, why am I talking about Pfizer so much? Well, I only talk about where there's data. Well, I speculate a bit from time to time, to be fair. But we try and talk about where there's data. And of course, the Pfizer vaccine came first. So the data for the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is starting to come in now from Scotland and so far it is very, very good. But it will be flooding in in the next weeks. So far it's the Pfizer data that's coming in because of course there's always the delay. It takes time. I mean, for, for even after the first dose, you've got to wait a full 21 days before you have any effect at all. So it's not surprising that there's a delay. So that, that's why we're looking at the Pfizer particularly because that's where we have data from at the moment. I am really looking forward to the equivalent data from the Oxford AstraZeneca, uh, but not there yet. So this is the Pfizer, the BTN162B2 mRNA messenger ribonucleic acid. That's the full name of the Pfizer. That's just the Pfizer vaccine. Now, um, vaccine effectiveness in healthcare workers is what's being studied. It's a prospective cohort study, so it's going forward, which is a good way to do studies. Cohorts, so it's large groups of staff undergoing regular uh, asymptomatic testing. Now, the staff here who are being, well, let's just look at the number. There's, there's nearly 30,000 of them. And they are reporting um, their symptoms, of course, fortnightly, but they're also being tested fortnightly for the antigen and the antibody. So I really must pay compliment to these people. They're getting the blood taken once a fortnight. And it's not the most pleasant procedure in the world by any means. And yet they're doing this on a, on a regular fortnightly basis. And I've been doing so for some time now. In fact, even getting the antigen test isn't that pleasant, putting swabs in your nose and your tonsils and things so it really is good of these these staff to keep this up and i think we really do need to pay them a, a really serious compliment that they've done really well now this is the siren study it stands for something like sars coronavirus 2 immunity uh, and a reinfection uh, evaluation something like that Anyway, so it's SARS coronavirus to immunity and reinfection evaluation. Good, good numbers. Two week, two weekly intervals. All these staff being uh, followed up. They record symptoms. They do a PCR test and they do an antibody test. Uh, therefore, symptomatic and asymptomatic infections are picked up. This is very important. This is picking up asymptomatic infections. So, of course, obviously, if we only report people's symptoms. Um, we're going to miss some infections at the, at the best of times. But after vaccination, we would expect many more asymptomatic infections as the vaccine gives uh, levels of protection against symptomatic disease. So that they are plotting hazard ratios compared to time. The risk of getting an infection with the vaccine versus the risk of getting an infection without the vaccine. And at the start of this study, there was a group of people who hadn't been vaccinated at the time. So, so they, they can compare them. And then when people are vaccinated, they're comparing them every fortnight as they go along. Very thorough, comprehensive study, very well conducted study. Um, infections in unvaccinated and vaccinated groups are being compared. Fortunately, I can't remember the precise figure, but the vaccinated group now is over over 90 percent so um, most of pe most of the people in the healthcare sector who are in this study have taken up the vaccine 
Um, now, some of the others, it's not that they're refusing the vaccine, it's that they've probably already been infected. And if you've already been infected, it might be best to wait a period of time before you have a dose of the vaccine. We did look at this with uh, Tim Spector last week because the people that have had the infection recently, when they have the vaccine, it tends to make them ill for a couple of days. So it might be appropriate in cons consultation with um, their own healthcare providers, of course, uh, to delay the vaccine by some weeks or a month or two if they've recently had the infection. But, but basically it's good. Over 90% of people have had the, uh, have had the vaccine is, is, the, is the point. Um, now, people who were antibody negative on recruitment. So this is findings as of the 5th of February. Of course, it's ongoing. This is the data we currently have. This was just published uh, yesterday or the day before. Day before, I think. People who were antibody negative on recruitment. In other words, people who hadn't had the infection didn't have natural, what we might call wild type immunity because they had not had the infection. Single dose of Pfizer vaccine, effectiveness 72%. So there you go, there you have it. Um, sample size of 29,378 people. One dose of vaccine prevents or reduces the likelihood of infection uh, by 72%. And this includes, critically, this includes asymptomatic infections which could otherwise have been missed. So um, preventing of symptomatic infections, of course, would be a much higher number, 80 or, or 90 percent would be a high number. But this includes asymptomatic infections because they are tested fortnightly. Of critically, this is 21 days, after, a minimum of 21 days after the first dose. Remember the data we looked at from Israel, uh, the first eight days after vaccination, the number of cases went up because we assume that people let it influence their behaviour. Then there was no effect from uh, 8 to 21 days. There was zero effect. Then at 21 days, the effect kicked in big time and most efficacious it was. Now, some people in this study had had uh, the second dose. So that is the effectiveness after one dose, 72% after one dose. So that's after one dose. After two doses, it rose to 86% seven days after the second dose. So obviously there was a time gap between the first and the second dose. Then seven days after the second dose, 86%. So there we have it. One dose of Pfizer vaccine gives 72% against uh, risk uh, protection against infection. Two doses bunks up to 86%. Now, because this is people are being tested here and 72% who don't have the virus they don't test positive for the virus and of course if you don't test positive for the virus you can't spread it so from this we can say that the first dose of the Pfizer is reducing the transmission of the virus because people without the virus can't <laughs> obviously can't be spreading it and they're the figures 72 percent 86 percent does this mean it would be good to vaccinate everyone uh, twice yes absolutely it does because we've got uh, what 14% um, more protection but do we increase the amount of overall immunity in the population with limited doses of the vaccine by giving one dose well clearly that is the case until more doses become available so that that, that that's data that's that, that that's real life numbers it's um, pretty well I don't really see a counter argument against that it's 72 percent efficacious after the first dose 86% after the second dose. Pretty marvellous. And the news gets slightly better than that. The conclusion, vaccine efficacy uh, prevents both symptomatic and asymptomatic infection in working age adults. OK, this is people at work. Although we will be looking at data that shows it's efficacious in older people as well. Uh, well, we did look at that from Scotland. We'll be reviewing that shortly. Um, and of course, if it's preventing asymptomatic infection then people without the virus cannot spread it. Therefore, we can say this is preventing transmission. Not as much as we'd like, but that is a good step in the right direction after one vaccine dose. Cohort was vaccinated when the dominant variant strain in circulation was B117. This is with the new variant. So these figures were calculated with the new variant so this is with the new variant we can assume with the old variant 
these numbers would be even higher. So pretty good news. Now, is this consistent? We always have to compare and contrast data. Is this consistent with data from Israel and Scotland, where we originally where we've got pretty good data sets from already? Israel collected by the Norwich Medical School, uh, Pfizer BioNTech vaccine after a single dose, real world studies at 21 days, vaccine effectiveness there was 91%. Now, why is the Israeli data so much better than the 72% data here? Well, I think there's two factors. The first factor is the 72% efficacy amongst healthcare professionals who we can assume, I think, are exposed more to the virus than uh, members of the public would be in Israel, for example. But I think the main reason is not that. The main reason is this 72% is picking up the asymptomatic infections as well because the people are being screened every two years, uh, every two weeks, every two weeks, sorry. Whereas in Israel, I think we can assume that they're not all being screened every, uh, every two weeks. These are probably the much more the symptomatic infections. So from this, it's looking like uh, one dose of the Pfizer vaccine is present preventing 72% of all infections, including asymptomatic infections. But from the Israeli data, I think we can say it's preventing 91% of symptomatic infections. So it looks like the data sets there are saying 72% for all infections, including asymptomatic, 91% of preventing symptomatic infections. Now, okay, a few of these in Israel will have been uh, tested. They will be based on, on positive uh, uh, PCR results. Um, but that, that probably explains the, the majority of the difference. And after 21 days, the Israeli immunity data remained at 90%. That's expected to last from nine weeks to six months. We don't know how long it is yet because the date time has not elapsed, but they're expecting it to be into the months. And vaccine effectiveness seems to be better at reducing severe disease than reducing mild illness. So the numbers of keeping people out of hospital in the Israeli data are not given, but we would expect them to be 91% or certainly higher well into the 90s. So the Israeli data is really quite consistent with the, the SIREN study, uh, healthcare workers in the UK data. And of course, that Israeli data is based on half a million people. The, the, these are, this is real world stuff now. This is not a trial anymore. And Public Health Scotland that we looked at the other day as well, four weeks after the first dose, Pfizer hospitalizations down 84% based on 60 650,000 people, Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine hospitalizations down higher 94%. And this was in both, this effect was seen in both age groups. So 81% reduction overall. So we can say that the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford vaccine are both highly efficacious in preventing hospitalizations. Therefore, the, uh, the French government and other governments that are saying this vaccine should only be used in the under 65s should, in my view, change their, their policy. And the idea that in South Africa they are storing a million vaccines, which are probably about to expire fairly soon, is... What, what word do you want to choose? Uh, obscene comes to mind. Uh, why they are doing that just is going against this massive scientific data that, 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 that all those vaccine doses will go to waste is just unconscionable. And yet that is the trajectory that South Africa is currently on by not giving out the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine supplies they already have. So ju just a quick uh, summary of that. Uh, so siren data, Israel data and uh, Scotland data. So it's all Pfizer. It's all 21 days uh, delay, of course. Uh, the figures, cases down after one dose with the Siren study, 72%, including asymptomatics. Israel cases down by 91%. This is real world data. This is what is really happening. In Scotland, with the Pfizer, we don't know the reduction in cases. We're not, it's not published yet, but we do know the hospitalizations are down by 84% after one dose. This is after one dose. Remember that. So, um, Siren, 72% down. Israel, 
including probably more symptomatic cases, down 91%. Hospitalizations in Scotland down 84%. First dose of the Pfizer vaccine sounds like a good idea. At Siren study, two doses of the Pfizer vaccine, efficacy goes up to um, 86%. Israeli data, two doses not yet published, but we can expect it to be 91% or more, probably quite a bit more from the Israeli data that's not yet published, but that would be a good guess. And the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine, we don't know from the Scottish data. We don't know. So this is all Scottish data here. We don't know how many cases of infection it's present, preventing, but we do know it's reduced hospitalizations by 94%. And this is based on a sample size of 1.2 million people in Scotland. So that is, that is uh, real world data now. Now more and more data is going to come in, um, but this data now is already based on such large numbers that the, the, the change in efficacy will only be really quite slight as larger num numbers come in. It will be consistent with this, as long as the variant uh, variants being um, immunised against are consistent with this. And just remember, just to recapitulate the Scottish data, uh, in the over 80s, never mind the over 65s, uh, government of France, uh, in the over 80s, hospitalizations down 81% which is a good start, and that is with a single dose. Uh, of, uh, and, that, and, that, and that's for the Oxford and the Pfizer vaccine together. Um, so there we go. Data for the Pfizer vaccine now unequivocal. Um, safety record good. Um, all, 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 no, no, no safety alarms have been triggered in terms of vaccine rollout in any country. And the efficacy is good with one dose, better with two doses. But because the efficacy is so good with one dose where supplies are limited, I think the delay of three months to getting the second dose is the way to go. Now, I know in the United States that they are thinking about this. And um, we don't have anything published yet. But as far as I can tell, the thinking in the United States is that they want to carry on with the two dose strategy because they believe the two dose strategy will give better efficacy against the new variants. That's their argument. Um, clearly the UK authorities don't agree with that. And at the moment, I think the, the balance of the evidence is, is with the UK authorities. So I still think that the United States authorities should be considering prolonging the dose between vaccines to get the vaccine out to more vulnerable people who until they've had the vaccine at all who, who people who have not had, had the vaccine at all remember who've had zero doses remain completely unprotected unless they've had a wild type infection so there we go um data's there we can we can basically say in our case proved this is proved now and uh, we just wait uh, eagerly for more oxford astrazeneca vaccine but are very encouraged by the very, very high efficacy in the AstraZeneca data from Scotland, reducing hospitalizations by 94% from the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. Um, so good news on the vaccines. Can't come quick enough. Thank you for watching, of course.